טוב, שלום לכולם, אני פרופסור עמית כהן, אני ראש המחלקה למדע והנדסה של חומרים באוניברסיטת תל אביב ונמצא איתי גם פרופסור אוזוולדו דיאגז שהוא ראש התוכנית לתואר שני ואוזוולדו יציג את התוכנית ואני גם אצטרף וגם זמין, נענה על שאלות גם בהמשך בבקשה אוזוולדו. תודה. שלום, שמי אוזוולדו ליאגס, אני ראש התוכנית לתוך השני למדע והנדסה של חומרים. אני צריך לומר שהעברית שלי לא מספיק טובה לפגישה הזאת, אז אני הולך לעבור לאנגלית. אבל אם יש שאלות, בבקשה תשאלו ואולי עמית או מישהו אחר, אולי אמיר יענה. So, uh, as I said, my name is Osvaldo Dieges. Uh, I'm the head of the program since this year. Uh, so the idea of this uh, meeting is to introduce uh, a bit about it. So I have prepared uh, some slides. Uh, you can ask questions at any time. Uh, if you uh, have questions that you think they are very particular to you because you want to give background, for example, and ask uh, some, you come from some particular degree and you are thinking to do a master in material science, then if you don't want to ask in this Zoom, I mean, you are welcome to ask, but if not, I'm going to share my screen. My email is going to be uh, there and you can ask me any question. I, I will get back to you within two days the most. Uh, we have done this before and uh, I know that the students have uh, questions uh, that are particular to the circumstances of every student. So please uh, write to me. This is my email. I, I think you can see it here. So, so it's my surname at TauX, uh, Tau Akil. Uh, I will answer your questions or I'll redirect uh, the, your questions to someone that can answer them either from the administration or from uh, to another professor. So uh, again, as I said, this is my first year as the head of the master. Uh, Amit uh, will correct me some of the things I'm not saying fully correctly, but uh, the main thing I want to say uh, to begin with is that there are two kinds of paths in the to get a, deg a tertiary degree with us. Uh, one is uh, based uh, on research, is the one uh, you see here in the second column, and one uh, that says project. Uh, here is a uh, more based on courses. There, there is a project, a uh, research project, a small one. You can see here that is only uh, three units. Uh, it is not. It's not going to be. Comp it used to be compulsory, but it's not going to be compulsory anymore. But it is a research project that, if you want to uh, start with the research, you can take, or if not, uh, you can take some other course that uh, is worth three courses also. Three points, three credits also. So again, the the normal route to a master degree with us includes research, and uh, you can see here that is a substantial amount of research, uh, and it includes uh, courses like the other one. It is uh, my view, at least, that uh, the research is a fundamental part of this. And that it is a good idea to start, even if the first months or the first year, you are expected to take many courses and be introduced in more detail to research in material science. It's a good idea to start thinking already in research and trying to find at least areas that you know you like less and areas that you like more. So in this presentation part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief 
summary of everything that is done in the department, okay, in terms of research. Because as I say, uh, it's very important that you begin to develop a taste for some kind of project. And it's important to find a supervisor. You don't need to enter the program with a supervisor found, but it's a very good idea to begin to uh, look into the research that you like and then find the person that uh, best uh, you think uh, would suit this uh, research. So before I go into the, so the research here is very broad as you are going to see, that is from the bio engineering to uh, experiments in the material science to theory. And uh, basically the department or the affiliated faculty covers all the, the, all the topics one would expect to find in a material science program. But at this point, if there is any questions that, re, uh, that you want to ask related to something in this slide that might not be clear or something that sounds surprising already to you or anything you want to ask at this point that has to do with the formalities of the program, you can ask and I can try right. to ask. To I, see the, I see there's a question about uh, environment. Okay. So what I suggest is um, Osvaldo will soon do a survey he will show the research topics of uh, the various uh, faculty members. And um, I think that that will answer the question partially. And if you want okay. to ask more. Uh, okay, so we can do that also. You, we can, uh, at any point, uh, even during the research or when we finish, you can ask anything about uh, either the research or the first part of, or whatever questions there are. So as I say, the research is the, uh, main part in uh, obtaining, I mean, in being educated enough to get a master title in uh, uh, material science. And uh, in uh, our program, there are uh, 23 groups to which the, uh, the research is automatically accepted for the program. And this is divided in two parts. One is the core members, which are professors at Tel Aviv University that belong to the material science department. And then there are other uh, professors that are based in other faculties like uh, chemistry, physics, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, but that they are already uh, picked because their research uh, falls into material science. So they are auto they are students they can su automatically supervise students in the materials uh, program. Okay, so I will go over their names at the end. And again, you can ask me if you have a particular topic of research, you can ask me uh, about those, those people, or you can uh, ask me about other researchers you know, and I will tell you if there is a path for them to also supervise a, a thesis in this. Uh, department, but in principle, the names I'm going to give are the ones uh, that are already automatically qualified to direct research. So our department, as you can see here in the core members part, uh, 12 people is not that large for a typical international uh, materials department. This is because the department was only founded uh, 10 years ago and our department is uh, still growing. So more professors will be hired in the next uh, years. Uh, still, with 12 people, uh, we cover basically most of the areas in material science. So these are the people that are in our department. Uh, Amit is the chair or the head, and is the person that has spoken already. Noam Elias is uh, also in our department, and uh, now is the decan, the dean of the university. And then you will see that there are other uh, professors, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, go one by one uh, to tell you a little bit of what I know. So I, my field of research is computational material science. I solve problems in material science using uh, simulations and computers. Still, I know a bit about uh, the research that is going on. So I'm going to tell you uh, a little bit of what goes on. Also, it's, sometimes it's possible even to, to do research with more than one person because uh, we all, our interests always overlap. So, uh, for example, Amit that I'm going to talk about, and I right now have a, a student that is uh, finishing is a third degree student, a PhD student. But uh, in general, professors here have uh, 
sometimes they share the advice in the student. So amid uh, that's a TEM, transmission electron microscopy. TEM is the uh, tool that we have to, the best tool that we have to characterize uh, materials at the nanoscale. So as you can see in uh, pictures like this, or uh, some of you have, might have seen already many more of those pictures, basically every time you see details in a picture of atoms in a material, the image typically has been taken with TEM. It's the only tool that gives you a uh, resolution bit, uh, several, uh, I mean, one order of magnitude even below the nanometer. So Amit in particular is an expert in electron holography, which is a, a very interesting uh, technique that allows you to, to, to measure things uh, like a phase, uh, to handle the phase of electrons in, in, a, in a microscope like this. So, what we do in this kind of microscope is to send one electron that goes through and for whatever, and they go basically one at, a what, one at a time. And depending on how the information that we get uh, when the electron comes out, we can uh, either take images or uh, like Amit does, uh, probe electric or magnetic fields. The Lloyd University has just got a, a last generation electron microscope that is now being installed. I not I don't know if Amit wants to say something about it. Yeah, just, just to say that in, in general, Tel Aviv University is undergoing a, a huge overhaul of its infrastructure of all the various characterization tools that are needed for uh, material science. And perhaps uh, the gem, the leading aspect is in transmission electron microscopy. So we're now installing um, pretty much the best there is worldwide in, in this uh, capability. So I, I think it's a, it's a really great time, really exciting time uh, to get into this. The, the, technolo the technological development, I mean, you, you hear about these huge developments, uh, I don't know, artificial intelligence and so on. The same kind of huge developments are also happening in characterization of uh, materials and electron microscopy. So, so it's, a, it's a great time to go into research in this field. So, and again, because it's a, a tool for characterization, you don't even need to be directly involved with the TM. The important thing is that whatever group you are in, the group will have access to the, to the TM. So whatever materials you are studying, they, they can be also studied, imaged with, the, with this tool. So I'm going to move on to the next uh, of our professor, which is Ilan Goldfarb. And uh, Ilan uh, works in the, uh, with materials that are called uh, silicides, transition metal silicides that are of interest uh, for microelectronics, for electronics in general. And uh, I have also, I happen to have collaborated also with Ilan because uh, he grows materials that are uh, very pure at the nanoscale. So this is perfect for someone like me that uh, looks uh, computationally at the materials atom by atom. So in, uh, he grows materials in ultra high vacuum and he is interested in, uh, lately in the magnetic properties of these materials. So these materials again are grown very perfectly in these uh, chambers of ultra high vacuum they, because they are grown at the nanoscale, they are grown as nano islands or uh, nano rods, et cetera. They, they have properties that are quite different from the, from the properties you have uh, when you grow them as a big crystal or a polycrystal. So in particular, uh, this kind of materials, uh, he has found that they have a magnetic behavior that is very different from the non-existent magnetic behavior they have when they are grown uh, uh, microscopically. So in particular with Ilan, we were looking at, um, we are still looking at uh, to explain, so this is more from the uh, fundamental uh, science point of view, to explain why when the materials are grown as nanostructures, they have magnetic properties. They, they behave like a little magnet, if you want. So that's uh, Ilan, and obviously he's, a, uh, he's an experimentalist. He uses all these uh, tools for characterization, STM, STS, 
all these tools basically, uh, like many of the tools for characterization, they shoot something against the material, like phonons, sorry, like photons, uh, some of them. And with the information they get when the photons uh, are come, come out of the material and get detected, they can learn about the magnetic properties like he does or the electronic uh, properties. So Noam, as I said, is the, is the dean of the faculty. The, his research is in uh, these days uh, a lot in additive manufacturing. So uh, in 3D printing, we have also one of the best uh, 3D printers uh, uh, in, the, in the country. Uh, Noam has a, a large uh, research group uh, working with uh, it, but he also does many other things. He, his research is also in uh, corrosion uh, and in uh, uh, biomaterials bio uh, a bit or materials for for impl uh, uh, implants and this uh, kind of thing. So again, because from the point of view of corrosion, the processes that go into the body and corrode the implants that we get uh, are still, I mean, there's a lot to, to understand there and there is a lot to polish on the materials until you get uh, last generation uh, pieces that can go into, into the human body, for example. So uh, again, this is the, his uh, research. Uh, Shahar does a, a little bit of uh, everything. I, I like a lot his research, he's very creative. He, I have collaborated with him also. So he does uh, from uh, uh, particles that uh, move when you put them in a liquid, they begin to spin around. And this we could model uh, together with even classical physics. He also has a, uh, uh, he also has a line of research that involves a medusa, a jellyfish, medusa, that uh, during the years, it's been uh, a very interesting, it's, very, it's been very interesting to follow what uh, he's doing with them. He uses uh, the jellyfish uh, tissues to do from uh, uh, bandages for medicine uh, to, to other creative things he, he does with them. So he uh, originally was doing uh, uh, electronics at the nanoscale, and I think he still keeps uh, some uh, projects of that kind. But uh, he has a uh, he has a lot of interests in research. Uh, so yeah, it's diffi difficult to characterize exactly. You can see in this slide that uh, is very broad uh, the the fields he covers. So. Uh, you are welcome to have a look and to talk to any of us, I mean, any of us about our own research. Ah, oh, that's me. Uh, I plotted a computer in my slide because that's what we do. I uh, like to uh, learn everything about our materials from the basic assumption that they are, they are made of atoms. And uh, once they are made of atoms, you just need to know how the atoms interact with each other. And to know this, you just need to solve a few equations that are based on quantum mechanics. Problem is that they are very slow to be solved. They can only be solved with computers and they are still very slow. But because the approach is so general, this is why I have collaborations with half the department because once the material is made of atoms, uh, I find it interesting, whether it's interesting, whether it's a metal, semiconductor, or insulator. So, we understand experiments that are, so when experimentalists find behaviors that are out of the ordinary, we try to understand it by doing experiments, numerical experiments on the materials. When the experiments are very expensive or impossible to realize because the pressure is the same as in the core of the earth, or because it's just very expensive to try things in, in a real lab, we try them in the computer. And these days, uh, and you will see another person in the department that works in, computer, in computational materials at the end, but these days we also predict properties of new materials because the computers have become very strong, and very fast. So we can take elements from the periodic table, put them together, form a crystal and solve the equations and basically learn if the material is going to be hard or soft or 
transparent or not, etc. And sometimes you find the material with the that is the hardest of them all, or the material that has a band gap that is perfect for LEDs, or there are many lines of research in this in this field. But again, this is purely uh, computational. I don't have a, a lab. I just have computers stored somewhere in the university. Professor uh, Ariel Ismach uh, is our expert in two-dimensional materials that, again, in the age of uh, nanomaterials, these are very thin materials, sometimes uh, one layer of atoms, sometimes a few layers of atoms. And they uh, have, in the, like I said for Elan, they have very special properties because once matter is grown at the nanoscale, the magnetism, the electric uh, electronic conduction, uh, and many the thermal properties, they change a lot. So they can, these materials can be engineered by being by growing them as very thin materials, for example, and you can decide how many layers you want, and then you will have a conductivity that is of the amount uh, you want. Or uh, so Ariel grows these materials, especially graphene and uh, what is called uh, uh, transition metal, metal uh, calcogenides, which are kind of the hottest. Uh, materials in this field today in his lab. He is right now in a sabbatical leave, but he will be back with us in, in the summer. So that's what Ariel does, the growth and characterization of uh, 2D materials. Uh, Brian is an expert in energy materials and in catalysis. So he uh, grows, uh, he has several uh, projects uh, his lab is uh, quite large and successful. He uh, uh, has projects uh, from to take uh, gas and convert it into liquid so that the, uh, the uh, fuels can be uh, transported to working with uh, perovskite oxides that uh, uh, function as uh, catalysts, so as uh, materials that help uh, chemical reactions to happen fast. So uh, Brian has been with us for the last uh, six years or so, and his lab is doing very well. Uh, Noah is our expert in uh, composite uh, materials, uh, particularly carbon nanotubes and polymers. He characterizes these uh, materials, creates these materials, and looks at the uh, characteristics of them. She also is uh, working in 3D printing uh, these days for uh, polymers and these uh, materials, uh, not like metals, like in the case of Noam, uh, of Noam but uh, she's uh, doing research also in this uh, field of 3D printing that probably you have heard of. It's also one of the hot fields in uh, material science. Uh, Sam is our expert in another of the tools that is uh, one of the main ones for characterizing materials, which is X-ray uh, crystallography. So again, to characterize materials, you basically do what I said. You throw them things, and you see what comes out. In this case, what you throw is radiation of very small wavelengths, and uh, what comes out of uh, a crystal, for, in his case, is uh, patterns that uh, you can uh, map, map to, the, to learn how are the atoms located in it. If you like, uh, again, uh, the theory and mathematics, although you do experiments with uh, a real X uh, ray source in crystals that typically you have been given by someone that grown them with purity, but then it's an art, the characterization of this just with uh, radiation. So if you are inclined towards uh, math or programming or uh, geometry, math in the basic kind of geometry uh, uh, subfield, then uh, he has very nice uh, projects uh, for this. Uh, Maxim does uh, ceramics. Uh, he joined, I think, four, three, four years ago. Uh, he is growing uh, these days what I'm familiar, I mean, again, I'm more familiar with some, I'm not saying everything about everybody because I don't know all the details, 
But uh, Max, uh, I know that uh, Maxim is uh, growing these Max materials that I also see these days in articles uh, that are uh, very much uh, being analyzed. They, they are ceramics that mix uh, materials and they are very flexible you can, in the sense that, uh, not in the elastic sense, but in the sense that the composition uh, allows for many types of elements to go in. Some are uh, magnetic, some are not, but uh, there is a lot of uh, application. I mean, there is a lot of basic science going on on the research of these uh, materials. Uh, so again, if uh, if you already know that you are interested towards the field of uh, ceramics or nanostructure ceramics, then uh, this is uh, one of the research uh, groups you could uh, try to learn more about. Uh, the one but last hiring of the department uh, that started one year ago is uh, Hanna, uh, Dr. Hanna Vishara. He uh, is our expert in defects. He does electrical measurements in materials to characterize uh, those defects. He's an expert in things like grain boundaries also. And he is just uh, setting up his uh, defects and internal interfaces in materials uh, lab. And the last uh, person to start working with us uh, this January is Dr. Lee Barton. He also does, like me, uh, computational material science, but he's more driven towards the... So I said that this field is about uh, either understanding materials or trying to explain uh, puzzling things that are happening in the lab and uh, we don't understand why or nobody understands why or you, you might want to do kind of numerical experiments under conditions that are very difficult or expensive to achieve, or you might want to create new materials by trying different combinations of atoms and see what uh, kind of bonds can be created. And uh, Lee works, uh, uh, most of his research is planned to be in this last field. So this is also something that is uh, these days in the world is one of the, main topics in, in my field, the field of computational materials. They, what is called high throughput, because there is a lot of, cal of calculations going on to make sure you, uh, you put together these uh, atoms and that they form a material and that the properties that you predict are really the properties the materials are going to have. And uh, uh, today they are already materials being created uh, in this way, there are materials that were first guessed in the computer and then uh, following the uh, elements that were found to be the, in the right proportion, they were then created in the, in the lab. So this is what Lee is starting to, to do since January here. Then, as I said, uh, there are other people that uh, there are other professors at Tel Aviv University that can supervise uh, alone, uh, individually, uh, students. So these are uh, in, uh, in our faculty of engineering, for example, in mechanical engineering, there is uh, Rami Hajali and Dov Sherman. They work, uh, Rami does uh, mechanical properties of materials and uh, does a, a bit of uh, computer simulations also. And Dov is interested in things like uh, how uh, cracks uh, propagates in, in materials. So again, they are in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, but they have uh, expertise in uh, material science, and this is why they are in, uh, in our field. In electrical engineering, there is a uh, Yossi Rosenberg and Yossi Shahan. Uh, Yossi Rosenberg uh, works with uh, semiconductors. Uh, Yossi Shahan does uh, a lot of things. You can also visit uh, his, uh, his page if you are interested. In chemistry, there is Gil uh, Markovic and Fernando Patoski. Uh, Gil Markovic uh, also does things from ferroelectric materials to other kinds of uh, uh, new materials. I, I, I mean, my, my, what I know about him, uh, he was doing ferroelectrics at some point, and then he was doing other materials that had a uh, that had, I think uh, it was uh, piezoelectric properties of interest, but uh, they are in chemistry and they are chemists. But again, 
a lot of their focus is on the materials part. So if you are, this is basically if you have an interest in materials, but you also have an interest uh, in some of the other in other things. There is people doing. Uh, there are professors working on biomaterials like metal, Silverman in our faculty, and uh, Dan Pierre, uh, uh, Hood Gazit, also, and uh, there are uh, people in physics. Uh, Joram Degan uh, does. Uh, Perovskite uh, does a lot of research with uh, physical properties of perovskite oxides from superconductivity to ferroelectricity. So again, uh, if you want to know in detail what they do is better than you uh, visit their webpage. But the picture I am trying to give is that as long as you have an interest in materials, there will be someone that uh, does research in material science. And uh, these uh, 23 uh, professors uh, can all be supervisors of research. It's a good idea to begin to think of research in terms of this kind of 23 areas. Uh, you don't need to pick a supervisor the first month you are here, but it's a good idea to have it in mind that at some point, uh, if you're going to do a and I see with the research, you will need a supervisor. And the main variable from my point of view is what do you like to do? Because research is going to take time and uh, it's an adventure. So you better pick something you, you like. And obviously, when you start, you don't know very well what you like. There is also all the courses you are going to take. And that's another way to uh, begin to develop a taste for uh, what you might end up doing in research. But even if you don't choose at the beginning, at least begin to have in mind that this, these are the fields. And at some point, uh, you will need to decide what you like uh, the most and to, to do research in it. So once you enter, the, so there is a, I don't know if to go or to let Amit uh, talk about it. These uh, the, uh, students that enter the master, uh, they can get a, uh, fellowships to, to do this research in a lab. Okay. Yeah, actually, want. there's a question. Uh, is, it, <clears throat> is it possible to join a lab immediately? So as, as Osvaldo uh, said, in fact, my opinion, I have, I have an even stronger opinion in that um, I think the strength of a master's is the research. That's really the academic research. In my opinion, that's what it's all about. And um, therefore, it's very important uh, as soon as possible, as you can, to choose the direction you think is uh, interesting and uh, the supervisor. And in that case, yes, you can join a lab very quickly. And what you have to do for that is uh, be active. What does that mean? Approach the faculty members. You know, you can send an email or telephone, uh, Osvaldo, myself, and all the other faculty members you saw. And uh, you can just say, look, I'm, I had the general look on your topics, uh, maybe on um, um, a publication of yours, and it looks uh, interesting. I'd like to meet you and talk and talk about the possibilities. And, uh, and all the faculty members will be very glad to meet and discuss this. That's, that's the, th the thing that they like most to talk about. That's their own research. And um, you can discuss this. And if you see that uh, it's a possibility for both sides, you know, you can go forward and, um, and start very soon with the research. And that really is the best option because a master's is on the scale of, uh, of about two years, four semesters. Um, there, there are quite a number of courses to, to learn, even if you're doing the, the, C, the research uh, track. Um, so there isn't so much time, you know, from the point of view of research. That's why it's good to start as soon as possible. So another question, can you go over the field in high level again? Um, not sure I understand who. This is uh, Hila. Uh, Hila, you want to go back or explain? Okay, I'm not, not sure I understand um, the question. Okay. 
Okay. So if you have uh, more questions or maybe on the process. So, well, I'll say just uh, that I agree with uh, Amit in that it's very important. No, no. No. או בצ'אט, או שתעשייה על מיוט. אוקיי, יש עוד שאלות? So I, I also want to say that because uh, both Amit and I made uh, this point that uh, research is the, uh, is the core of the program that uh, I think uh, choosing something you, you like is important, but it's not even the most important thing. Uh, any of the labs that, you are, that are here, they provide opportunities for research, even you, if you are not, you don't need to, overthink uh, what you want to do. If you decide that you want to do research, uh, a lot of us started research in some lab for some reason. And you, if you are in, if interested in research per se, it doesn't matter that much the exact field. You cannot make a mistake in other words. Uh, it's not that you need to find your perfect uh, lab to, to work. If you devote yourself to a lab, there is also ways to, to move uh, research to, to the important thing is to begin to think in terms of you need to ask your own questions and de decide how whether you are going to do to to answer them uh, in terms of experiments or, or calculations in my case so this is why what i say is that you should you should have it in mind you don't even need to decide very soon and it's not that important that crucial that you pick the group a or group b uh, the important thing is that you invest out of the next two years that you invest time seriously into research. It doesn't really matter which, uh, which group. Also, at a university like Tel Aviv, uh, all, all the opportunities for research are going to be good. Uh, this I can, I can tell you. So just not to say that you should be worried if the second week you haven't decided that what is the most interesting research. Yes. Okay, so I see the question. Again. Yeah, if so, my PI is affiliated from mechanical engineering, for instance, but I want to do a thesis under materials engineering, will I have to take any courses from mechanical engineering school? So I don't think so. No, I mean, it's not, it's not possible. The only option uh, is if you have uh, two supervisors, one uh, is a no, no, but I think that, I mean, th there are two ways to understand this question. One is that the PI is one of the people I said, like Rami. Uh, so if the studies is in, a, in, a, in material science, you need to take the courses in material science. If the question is that your PI is one, a person that is not in the list I gave, then what Amit was saying is, is correct. You need to find a co-advisor from material science. Yes, and that will work if the topic uh, fits both uh, faculty yes. members. But um, about uh, courses, uh, there, there is, if you're on the research track, there's uh, more flexibility in the sense that uh, if your supervisor says that there's an important course for your research, then they yes. will put forward a request to Osvaldo and uh, most chances, you know, Osvaldo will look at it, most chances he will uh, approve it. I mean, it's, he will just I check if it's relevant to the research. Anything reasonable, I approve. Yes, so we, we, have, we have many such cases that um, if, there's a, if there's a course that interests you and it's not in the list and it's relevant to your research, um, there's a good chance we'll approve it. And there was, a, again, a repeat on the question, on the topics. So the
The point um, we wanted to make is that the material science and engineering department works in a way that um, each faculty member was recruited to deal, you know, on a certain topic, you know, in a sort of a big way. Of course, everyone does their specific research, but um, say uh, Osvaldo is in the computational material science. Uh, for me, it's characterization by electron microscopy. And uh, so that, if I understand the question, that, that's the kind of the, the, the headline of the topic. So again, NOAA will be in composite materials. Sam will be in characterization by X-ray diffraction. Maxim will be in ceramic materials. Hannah will be in the field of uh, interfaces and defects. Lee, also computational material science, but quite different from where Osvaldo. It's, it's such a big topic today. It's, uh, it's exploding in different directions. Uh, Ariel in 2D materials. Brian in energy materials and catalysis. Noam in many aspects in biomaterials, in 3D printing of, uh, uh, of metals. Shacha also has uh, uh, in molecular electronics to biomaterials and Ilan in surface science. So that's kind of the big picture um, in terms of the direction. Okay, so can, can you I, also elaborate on the fellowships? Can I say? We also have a few from the faculty that are working on these issues. I will say in a general way that there are also fellowships. There is a fellowship in fellowships. They increased the fellowships in the האחרונות. כעיקרון אפשר לקבל מלגה, זה, זה או מההתחלה על בסיס הממוצע, ציון הכניסה וועדת הקבלה, זה מ... אם אני מדייק אז זה משהו כמו 85 ומעלה, וגם אחרי זה יש אפשרות לקבל מלגה אם בקורסים שלומדים גם מקבלים ממוצע, מקבלים ציונים גבוהים. אז זה הנושא של המלגה. בנוסף, הסטודנטים שעוסקים במחקר, אפשר או מעסיקים אותם כעוזרי הוראה, אם זה בקורסים או במעבדות, וזה ממש העסקה עם משכורת וגם התנאים הסוציאליים. אז אז אני חושב שהתנאים שה, שיש, כלומר זה מאפשר כמובן שגם מכסים את השכר לימוד. אז מה שאני רוצה להגיד בזה שממש נותנים הזדמנות אה, ככה לקחת את הזמן, לקחת את השנתיים האלה ולהיות מרוכזים ב, בייחוד של המקום הזה, מה שהאוניברסיטה יודעת לתת, שזה מחקר אקדמי בסיסי, חלק מנושאי המחקר הם גם עם הרבה היבטים יישומיים, אבל זה ממש אקדמי, מעמיק, אפשר ללמוד הרבה מאוד, ממש להתעסק בנושא בלי איזשהו לחץ לפרוץ בין נושאים או ממש ככה להוציא את המירב ואת המיטב מהנושא המחקרי. Yeah. Ah, okay, so that was the question on the fellowships. Yeah. So hopefully that's okay. More questions about that? Yes, we have students, we have many students, and many of them are also in the press and the students of the students. There are also the students of the students, or because of the students of the students. זה גם, זה גם מסלול שמשפר את, ה, את המלגות. טוב, אני אציין גם, יש גם את המסלול, אנחנו קצת לא כך ציינו אותו כי אנחנו מאוד מרוכזים במחקר, יש גם את המסלול ללא תזה, 
הייתי אומר שזה יותר מתאים לאנשים שנמצאים במקומות עבודה, בתעשייה ורוצים להרחיב את הידע שלהם, או זה אולי חלק מהצורך במקום עבודה להרחיב את ההתמחות בחומרים, ואז הריכוז כאן זה באמת בקורסים, ללמוד אולי במידה מסוימת זה קצת כמו המשך של תואר ראשון, אבל ממוקד ממש על דברים ספציפיים בתחום של חומרים. בדרך כלל משתדלים עם הקורסים האלה, ש... ובכלל זה נכון בתור... בתארים מתקדמים, משתדלים, לא במאה אחוז, אבל משתדלים שהקורסים יהיו אחר הצהריים, גם מתוך מחשבה לאותם אנשים שמגיעים מה... מהתעשייה. אז שם אנחנו רואים בעיקר את, ה, את העניין במסלול ל, ללא תזה. ומי שבכל זאת, כמו שאוזוולד ציין, במסלול ללא תזה רוצה איזושהי התנסות, קצת להרגיש מה זה מחקר, יש את האפשרות בחירה היום של לקחת בהיקף קטן פרויקט וככה איזושהי שאלה קטנה ו, ולהתרשם איך זה עובד במעבדה. אהלן, אני אשמח גם לשאול שאלה אם זה בסדר? בבקשה. דיברת עכשיו נניח על מסלול לאנשים עובדים, אז רציתי לדעת מבחינת מערכת השעות, אני יודע שלא כל מחלקה מאפשרת באמת עבודה במשרה מלאה. אז רציתי לדעת איך זה יכול להסתדר נניח, איך, איך מערכת השעות בנויה פחות או יותר. אתה מתכוון למסלול ללא תזה, נחקור. באמת, נכון. כן, אז... כאשר עושים את השיבוץ של הקורסים, מודעים למצב הזה, ולכן כמגמה כללית משתדלים אה, לשבץ את הקורסים אה, שיתחילו ככה מאזור שלוש, ארבע וגם יותר מאוחר אחר הצהריים. מתוך מחשבה שמי שנמצא במסלול הזה, אה, אז הוא נמצא חלק אה, מרבית היום בעבודה ואז הוא יכול אה, להמשיך לקורסים, אנחנו גם מבינים, וזה גם מה שקורה בפועל, שמי שנמצא במסלול הזה ללא תזה וגם עובד, כמובן, ב... אז בעצם זה לוקח יותר זמן, כן? מסיבות ברורות, כן? צריך למצוא את הזמן לקורסים, אבל זו אפשרות מאוד, מאוד פופולרית, הייתי אומר זה משתנה משנה לשנה אבל באופן כללי מידת הרישום למסלול ללא תזה די דומה לרישום עם תזה. מה, יש, הרבה, יש הרבה אנשים בוודאי כאן בסביבת תל אביב שיש כל כך הרבה חברות רלוונטיות שזה זה, זה מדבר אליהם אני מניח מהשאלה שלך שאתה גם שוקל את זה ולכן יש, יש ניסיון ו... וככה זה עובד. אז, אז אני חושב שבסך הכל אתה כן תצליח לשבץ את, את, את הקורסים, אבל כמובן אי אפשר להבטיח ויכול להיות שפה ושם צריך או לחכות עם הקורס או לבחור קורס אחר במקום. אוקיי, okay, ושאלה נוספת, את התואר הראשון שלי, הראשון, את התואר הראשון עשיתי בהנדסת חומרים אבל במוסד אחר. אז איך נניח אני יודע מבחינת השלמות האם אני צריך כן, אז אתה, אתה מגיש את הבקשה, אז נעשית איזושהי בדיקה ויש גם ועדת קבלה גם של חברי סגל, במידת הצורך אז, אז נקבע איתך, ניפגש איתך, בדרך כלל היום אנחנו עושים את הפגישות האלה בזום וככה מתרשמים מהרקע או יש כמה שאלות ו... ואז אפשר לקבל החלטה ו... זה יכול להיות החלטה ממצב שבסדר גמור ואתה יכול להתחיל עד מצב ש... שצריך השלמות. אם אני אקח את המקרה הקיצוני, זה לא המקרה כמו שאני מבין שלך, אבל יש לנו גם מקרים של אנשים שבאים מרקע שהוא בכלל לא של הנדסת חומרים, למדו משהו אחר לגמרי, עדיין אפשר להמשיך לתואר שני, ויש לנו ארבעה קורסי השלמה. ש... שצריך לה, לה, לעשות, לעבור אותם בהצלחה ואז זה, זה נותן את הבסיס שנדרש כדי להמשיך לתואר שני. עכשיו גם, אני לא יודע אם זה לא נשמע רלוונטי למקרה שלך, אבל אני רק אציין שמי שצריך יותר השלמות או הרקע פחות 
מתאים, אז, אז מה שעושים, רוצים שקודם לעבור את ההשלמות בהצלחה, לפני שאפשר להירשם באופן פורמלי ולהיות סטודנט לתואר שני, כדי שלא יהיה מצב שאם זה לא מסתדר עם ההשלמות, אז לא יהיה מצב שהוא, שרשומים כבר בתוך המסלול. אוקיי, okay, תודה רבה. כן, יש עוד שאלות? יש ביניכם כאלה שנרשמו כבר? אוקיי, אז אני חושב שמבחינתי, או זוולדו, אתה רוצה עוד להוסיף? אני חושב, אני חושב שמבחינתי המסר הכי חשוב זה, זה ליצור קשר עם החברי סגל. עמית, אני חושב שיש שאלה בצ'אט. יכול לתת... אה, תעודת הוראה במקביל ל... אוקיי, האמת, זה, זה אני לא מכיר. אני מניח שיש אפשרות כזאת, זה אולי כדאי לברר באדמיניסטרציה של האוניברסיטה, ידעו למי, למי להפנות. אצלנו חברי הסגל לא, לא עוסקים בקורסים או בהוראה שקשורה לקראת תעודת הוראה, אבל יכול להיות שיש אפשרות... עמית יש אפשרות, אבל צריך אישור משתי הפקולטות לעשות שני תארים במקביל. למרות שזה תעודת הוראה, אבל בכל מקרה צריך אישור, אישור בשביל לעשות את זה. אוקיי, okay. מהניסיון שלך נתנו אישורים כאלה בעבר. נת... לא לתעודת הוראה, אבל נתנו לשני תארים במקביל. Okay. אז סך הכל הכיוון החיובי, אבל צריך, צריך באמת... נראה לי שכן. זה צריך לבדוק את זה לעומק. Uh, האם מערכת השעות יכולה להסתדר עם משרה מלאה? כמה ימים בשבוע בממוצע יש לימודים ומאיזה שעה? מסלול פרויקט? אז כן, כמו שציינתי, uh, מר, uh, מרבית, אם לא... אני חושב שאפשר לומר כל, כל האנשים שנרשמים למסלול uh, ללא תזה, כלומר, uh, uh, מסלול של הקורסים, הם אנשים ש... עובדים בתעשייה, ואז כן, בהחלט זה, זה אפשרי. כמה אם בשבוע מצא יש לימודים, אז סך הכל זה פרוס על כל השבוע, כמו שציינתי, בדרך כלל אחר הצהריים. מה שכאשר אתה נרשם, זה תום אני רואה, אז כאשר אתה, אתה נרשם, אז אתה תוכל לראות בידיון ובתכנון של ה... קורסים מה מוצע באותו סמסטר באותה שנה ולהירשם. אז כמובן שבאופן אידיאלי ההרשמה נעשית רק משיקולים של מה הכי מתאים לך, מה אתה חושב הדבר הכי נכון עבורך לצורך הלימודים, כלומר במסגרת גם הכללים של מה אפשר להירשם, אני, אני מיד אעיר על זה דרך אגב Uh, ויש גם, uh, אנחנו מכירים, יש גם את המציאות של מה, uh, מה אתה צריך לעשות במקום עבודה, שעות עבודה, מתי הקורסים uh, מועברים. אז לכן אני, מהניסיון אני יכול להגיד שאני uh, נתקל במקרים של אנשים שרצו מאוד איזה קורס מסוים, אז uh, זה לא מסתדר, אז הם ידחו את זה עד הסבב הבא, או שמוצאים uh, קורס uh, אחר, uh, השני בתור uh, בהעדפות. וההערה שהייתה לי, רק רציתי לציין, אז יש מגוון רחב של קורסים שאפשר לבחור. רוב הקורסים הם קשורים, הם באים מתוך המחלקה, ויש גם הרבה קורסים שאנחנו זיהינו אותם, אנחנו יודעים שהם קשורים למדע חומרים, ואפשר גם אותם לקחת. הם מחולקים לקטגוריות. יש קטגוריות כמו הנדסת חומרים, כמו... אפיון, כמו נושא של פני שטח וכולי, יש, ומתוכם אנחנו דורשים לקחת לפחות קורס אחד מכל קטגוריה. 
והמטרה של זה, זה פשוט, כי זו המטרה גם של התואר השני, לקבל ככה ידע והרחבה יותר מגוון. שלא יהיה מצב במסגרת תואר שני שסטודנט ממש ככה לוקח את כל הקורסים באיזשהו פן מאוד מסוים בתחום של חומרים, אנחנו לא חושבים שזה נכון בשלב הזה. כפי שאוזוולדו ציין, אין, אין לנו ציפיות ש... זה, זה, זה לא המצב שגם מי שלוקח את המסלול המחקרי יודע בדיוק את הנושא, זה, 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 לא, זה לא השלב, זה השלב uh, כזה להיפתח ולשמוע נושאים ו, וגם בנושא המחקרי uh, פשוט לנסות את התחומים. אוקיי, uh, okay, אז אני מקווה שזה ענה, יש, יש כל הימים, זו תהיה בחירה שלך. איך לשבץ. אוקיי, okay, יש עוד שאלות? בסדר, אז אני, אני אשמח מאוד לראות אתכם במחלקה, נרשמים למחלקה לתואר שני, ואני גם אשמח, עוד יותר אשמח שכבר תתחילו לשלוח אימיילים ותתקשרו ותקבעו להיפגש עם החברי סגל, לדבר על הנושאי מחקר. נחפש לכם את, ה, את הנושא מחקר, ואם יש שאלות, אתם מוזמנים, אז ולדו, אני, יש גם uh, מהפקולטה עצמה, מהאדמיניסטרציה, מהסגל המינהלי, נמצאת כאן ורד, שגם אפשר לפנות בשאלות, uh, uh, בשאלות של ההרשמה. אוקיי, אז תודה לכם. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. בהצלחה. בהצלחה, ולהתראות. להתראות.